right now, I'm going to introduce to you what is Startup Grind. So Startup Grind is the world's largest community of startups, founders, innovators, and creators. Currently, we have uh, reached over 3.5 million people, over 125, more than 125 countries. And our core belief, our values are Number one, we believe in making friends, not contacts. And this number two, we believe in giving, not taking. And number three, we believe in helping others before helping yourself. So I want to talk specifically about Startup Grind Jakarta. So Startup Grind Jakarta was established in 2014. Our mission is to build a, a network of startup founders and entrepreneurs to help the ec economic growth in Jakarta. So these are our past speakers. We have speakers from all different departments, different, um, different businesses. We have people in Happy Fresh, Tokopedia, Hacktivate, and there's still a lot more. Next, I wanna talk about um, Apiary Coworking Space. So Apiary Coworking Space is a coworking space located in West, in West and South Jakarta. And our mission is to help businesses grow through our three pillars. The first pillar is learning, where we create weekly educational content seminars, uh, where we invite uh, speakers from different businesses to talk about their experiences. Number two is a business solutions. We have a lot of products to help small businesses grow, uh, like uh, accounting, tax, legal, design, IT, and et cetera. And number three, we have community. So not only do we provide uh, products, we also create this uh, community where people from different businesses, different industries can come and share their knowledge, can uh, talk about their experiences in creating a startup so that we can uh, support each other during our weekly networking event. So this is the uh, event that Startup Grind and Apiary have worked together to create the Startup Growth Conference. Currently, we're in the third day uh, pitch battle, our final event. So, yeah, so today's gonna be the pitch battle. It's going to be about the, uh, it's going to focus on five different uh, startups that we have chosen to pitch their ideas to um, investors and VCs and the winner will get a uh, really good prizes. So I would like to give this mic to uh, Richard Darsono. He's an account manager at Google Indonesia and he covers right hailing e-commerce and FinTech verticals. Richard also worked for GoPay to help scale the offline merchant ecosystem. He's going to be our moderator for today. So go ahead, Richard. Okay, thank you for the introduction, Peter. So happy to be here. And before we start this uh, amazing opportunity, uh, allow me to introduce the judges, the five selected startups, and also finally the rules of the event. So judges, uh, please introduce yourself uh, and maybe uh, tell us a bit more about your VC and what's the most important thing you look for a startup. Cool. Uh, so maybe, uh, yeah, I think RJ can start. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is RJ from Monksville Ventures. Uh, we're a Southeast Asian based VC focusing on early stage startups, uh, primarily on the Series A space, uh, investing anywhere between two to six million. And we invest in all sorts of technology. So we're quite agnostic for that. Uh, a couple of our investments in Indonesia uh, that you may know of is Ninja Express, uh, Czech Adja, uh, Kulina, uh, and, and plenty more all around the world as well. And that's a little bit it for me. Thank you. Thank you, RJ. And the second judge is Raditya Pramana from Ventura Discovery. Do you want to say a word, Radit? Hello. Yes, we can hear you.
Yes. Um, sorry, my signal is pretty bad uh, today. I'm not sure why, but you know, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Sorry if I don't have my video on because it, you know, the signal has been breaking and just wanted to introduce, quickly introduce myself. So I'm Adit or Adit, I'm a partner of Venture Discovery. We're an early stage VC firm investing in high growth technology companies all around the region. We have been investing over the past five years out of two different funds. And the last one, Venture Discovery, is mainly focusing on C to pre series A companies in the region, primarily based out of Indonesia, Vietnam, and Singapore. So, you know, um, you know, looking forward to uh, looking forward to hear more from like I guess amazing entrepreneurs uh, that will be presenting today. As you know, we look forward to um, you know investing in amazing entrepreneurs like the ones that we have backed before. Uh, you know uh, that we're fortunate to kind of work on together, such as the ones like Sociola, the largest online uh, beauty uh, e-commerce and marketplace platform, uh, Ruangguru, and the largest online video learning platform in Indonesia. Zilingo, the fastest growing e-commerce platform on fashion. And it's a quick introduction about us. Thank you, Radit from Ventura. On to the next one, uh, Junia Layardi from Indo Indogen Capital. Oh, hi, everyone. I'm Junia from Indogen Capital. Uh, we are sector agnostic, and now we are looking for a startup that's pandemic proof. Uh, we are investing in get size 500k to 2 million with a series a pre A to series A stage. Our portfolio includes Carsum, Travelio, uh, and then the recent one is EFLOS and Wahyu. Thank you. Thank you, Junior. And next we have Gani Putra from MDI Ventures. Hi, yeah, thank you everyone for um, joining in. Um, a quick background, MDI Ventures is the state-owned uh, corporate venture capital of Top Home Arm. Um, to date, we have currently four funds active. We invest everywhere between uh, ideation stage all the way to pre-IPO stage. Um, although we are CVC, we act primarily more like a traditional uh, institutional venture capital. So um, that's us. Um, and yeah, we've been around for quite some time and we've recently launched a new fund at the moment. So targeting more towards the later stage. Uh, thank you. Awesome. So next we have uh, Michelle Irawan from Skystar. Hi, hi guys. Uh, so yeah, my name is Michelle I'm from Skystar Capital. So Skystar Capital has been established since 2014, uh, backed by two conglomerates in Indonesia, Saratoga Capital and Compass Square Media Group. So we have invested in 30 early stage companies. Uh, 29 of those are still active. Um, and our ticket size is between 300K up until 1 million. Uh, we focus on um, companies that, you know, have a focus in Indonesia, obviously, um, because that's where our value add is. Um, and we're sector agnostic. Um, so, yeah, we invest in, like, all over um, any sectors. Um, and, yeah, we believe that in every sector, uh, you know, we have enough network in, in our group that can uh, value add to the growth of the company. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to hear your pitch. Thank you, Michelle. And we have uh, William from Calibra Capital. Hi, everyone. I'm William. I'm a senior associate in Calibra Capital. We're cross-border. We are also sector agnostic, and we primarily focus on startup series A and above. In the past, we've had ticket sizes in ranging between 100K to 1.5 million. And some of our portfolio companies include Travelio, Carsum, and uh, Igloo. Uh, thank you. Thank you, William. And last but not least, we have uh, Arung Sultan Pramuka from Alpha Momentum. Um, okay, uh, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Arung from Alpha Momentum Indonesia. So basically, uh, Alpha Momentum Indonesia is a corporate venture capital. We are backed by one of the largest IT distributor company. Uh, it is a CTI Group. And in investing in startup, uh, we look for uh, tech, uh, more to tech-based uh, startups. And our ticket size is uh, from two. 250k to 1 million and other than investing we look more for a strategic partnership because um yeah because uh, our background that we back by uh, corporate i think that's it from from me thank thank you judges thank you all for the introduction and now let me introduce the five selected uh, startups so equally uh, exciting, we have done a random selection of the order of startups to pitch here. 
So we have received over like 50 to 100 uh, applications in the past week. So here are the five uh, startups that are going to pitch today. The first one is uh, Kirim Kirim. And the second one is Check Lab. Third one is Pocket Pet. Fourth one is Pick Up Indonesia. And the last one is Hala Active Wear. So um, these are the five startups. And uh, in a bit, uh, they're going to start uh, one by one. But uh, most importantly, I will go to cover the event format uh, and the rules of the pitches. So the most important thing is to be mindful of the time. So startups, uh, founders, please keep a stopwatch uh, next to you or your computer because uh, sorry in advance, we will cut you if your pitch go over time, right? So each startup will have five minutes strictly to pitch. It's okay to go less than five minutes. That means we'll go uh, to more of a Q&A. And Q&A will be 10 minutes only. So uh, we will be accepting questions from the judges and also the audience in the chat box, right? So the, due, due to the time limit, we will only select a few questions to be answered. Yeah, so I hope that's uh, pretty clear. And in terms of the judging criteria, there will be uh, five categories. The first one is your value proposition. The second one is your market op the market opportunity technology, uh, product or service, and the team. And the last one will be the pitch clarity. All right. So I think, you know, it's not complete without the prizes. Uh, the top three winners, so out of the five, uh, will win a startup grant global membership. What, what is this? It is just like um, access to startup grant exclusive events and uh, the connection or, or network that you can uh, do around the world. The second one, uh, you'll also get a community membership and office space for the first winner from Apiari co-working space. And uh, thirdly, you'll also get mentorship sessions from uh, several VCs. And last but not least, each of the three winners will win a golden ticket to plug and play Indonesia's top 50 batch eight applications accelerator program. So uh, that's exciting, right? And all right, I think uh, without further ado, let's let's uh, get started with the pitch number one uh, from uh, Kirim Kirim. Hi, uh, I'm Kelvin and Andrew. We are from Kirim Kirim. Uh, we're going to start to uh, have our pitch deck. Oh. Mm. Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone. So can uh, can you guys see our screen right now? Yeah, okay, so um, we are uh, Kirim Kirim. Uh, we actually focusing on the freight forwarding business. If you don't know about the freight forwarding business, it's like a containerized cargo. We are especially handling the B2B business. Um, if you know the conventional freight forwarding is, uh, this business has been ages but the technologies behind it is very um, back behind. So, so these are the key problems that, that actually uh, freight forwarding business has been facing through, even the customer itself. So we are facing three um, problems in this freight forwarding business, which is the first one is the non-transparent information, uh, which is for the client itself and the freight forwarding itself. So you don't even know where your position of the cargo is it. And the second one is a time consuming process because we are a uh, freight forwarding business. We are delivering big cargo and uh, uh, B2B materials. And we are not like a career service that, that you, if you ask for a, for a, for a, uh, for a delivery point, it will uh, come up easily, but we have to quote them in a timely manner so we need some process in the conventional freight forwarding. And the third one is uh, we have a problematic monitoring. So uh, the report behind this, uh, this uh, freight forwarding business is non-transparent, as I said in the first one. So with, uh, with the 
with the many problems inside of the freight forwarding business, we are uh, creating some of the digital freight forwarding, which are able to uh, look the online prices, book, track your cargo, and we are we, we are providing a reporting tools for the cargo owners, which is very important because the aim of the uh, business owner or a cargo owners is just to reduce the cost in every uh, every yearly basis. So we are uh, we are uh, if if I'm 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 saying like simple thing we are a travel loka or we are um, we are a quick quick online tools quoting for a freight forwarding. Uh, we are focusing on that. And if we compare between the companies that uh, that exist in Indonesia right now, uh, we gather all the more uh, all the all the domestic international. We gather the instant quote. We offer the competitive pricing, and we offer a credit payment, which is a B two B credit payment. Uh, we are right now still self funded, and uh, we actually have a background uh, on the conventional freight forwarding itself. And the next part of the monetary things we'll explain further by Andrew. Uh, so, a little bit different of the logistic market in Indonesia, we have the data from 2018. Uh, the total market size for land, sea, and sea freight and warehousing in Indonesia is around $6.7 billion, with the average growth is almost 12% uh, annually. And if we break down into the ship, uh, the sea freight and the air freight cargo by itself, the, the major exports is around 1.4 million containers um, from four major seaports in uh, Indonesia, and the import is around 1.3 million containers. And for the import in air freight itself, sorry, export from uh, air freight itself is around 183,000 uh, tons. Um, from two major international airports in Indonesia, which is Soekarno Hatta and Bali, and it's around 200,000 uh, 200, uh, tons for the import from that two major airports. Okay, I'll skip through the how we do our business model, so we don't uh, charge any commission for our uh, vendor or our customer. We uh, take up margin around 50 cents per kilogram for air freight, and we take up margin for $50 per container for sea freight. And we also charge them uh, uh, special charges service, such as custom clearance service, uh, insurance, trucking. If they, if they don't have any uh, license for imports or export, we will also provide the underground service, and we provide a warehousing service as well. Okay, this is the, our target KPI for the first year after we get the funding. Uh, we break down into uh, uh, C freight, air freight, and the insurance uh, uh, proportion. We target the, after we get funding, we have a 30 monthly users uh, with a total spending of 10 uh, PU per customer and estimated revenue from C freight is around $1.8 million. And uh, from the air freight and the insurance, you can see it's around 200. Uh, and okay, sorry, Andrew, time's up. But thank you, uh, for Andrew from Kiring Perum. So I think uh, we're entering the Q&A session for the first pitch. I'll start. Um, thanks, Andrew, for the wonderful uh, introduction to Kirim Kirim. Uh, so Flexport became big because they focused primarily on the China-US trade. Um, for you guys in the next six to 12 months, where, where are you going to be focused on in, in terms of uh, export and imports to Indonesia? I think you're on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Now currently we are focusing on the Indonesian export for our major customers and in this pandemic situation, we are more focusing targeted into a more specific uh, customer, which is uh, FMCG customers because uh, uh, during this pandemic and we can see, uh, we, we have forecasted into the two, three years. It's uh, more prospective towards that direction. And we are, uh, uh, more uh, focusing on the export terms because they 
especially in intra Asia, from uh, from Indonesia to intra Asia destination. Cool. Thank you. Hi, Andrew. Is it um, Michelle here from Skystar? I have a question. So, so do you actually uh, do aggregate all the freight forwarding uh, platforms, or are you a freight forwarding like an online freight forwarder? No, uh, we aggregate. We're aggregating from the ship providers, not from the freight forwarders itself. So we are uh, get the our vendors is directly the uh, uh, ship providers or the airlines. Noted. Uh, and how do you manage to keep your price competitive? Uh, I, I, you know, like um, I have little knowledge of the, the industry, but I'm sure the conventional fit forward have established quite a good network among the uh, shippers and they must have pretty good deal, right? Okay. Uh, Calvin will explain for this part. Okay. Yeah, probably. Uh, if, you, if you were saying that the, the conventional freight forwarding has uh, numbers, uh, numbers of volume, uh, we are building a uh, numbers of where we are focusing on some of the destination, which is our, we are uh, offering them a very good rate because we build up some volume with the liners. So we, because we commit uh, on some number of containers per month with the liners. So we are not saying that, that we are uh, best giving a best prices to, 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 to all of our customer with, with to, to, to all destinations, but we can focus on uh, Perhaps like Andrew said before, it was intra Asia destination. So right now, if we are see, we have a big, very big volume right now to Malaysia, to China itself, and we have a big volume to Australia. So uh, the the shipping line is committed on some 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 uh, prices to us, so they don't sell uh, the prices to other freight forwarders. That's 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 how the things work. If you are, uh, if, if we are looking uh, backwards, like like um, the, the existing one, like Andalin, uh, they are comparing between the freight forwarder itself. For us, uh, it's not competitive at all because from uh, shipping line, they sell, uh, not, they they add a margin to the freight forwarding, and and they will add more to the Andalin client. So uh, that's why we are directly through the shipping line because we know the hustle and we know the the, the price is very competitive if we can negotiate. Better and you are given some volume to the liners. Noted. Thanks for that. Yeah. We have one uh, one minute left for a question. Maybe one a more quick question. Yeah. Hi, Gani from MDI here. I uh, just wanted to quickly ask on the tractions at the moment. You know, how many uh, corporate clients do you have right now, and who are you working with to help out? Um, on the distribution and shipping side. Okay, uh, currently for the traction itself, uh, we have around 20 to 25 uh, existing clients, which is ranging from mid middle to uh, high uh, to a big uh, companies. In the middle, in the big companies, we are, uh, already have wings in our side for uh, for their for their export uh, export needs, and for the traction itself. Currently, we already uh, on the second year of our operations, and up to these nine months, our revenue is three times for uh, compared to the to, compared to 2019. So uh, during this uh, pandemic situation, actually our business is going up. Um, not because of uh, uh, yeah, this the pandemic. Some of our customers uh, are from FMCG, but their volumes and their business actually not slowing down, but I think. Uh, uh, but then it's moment. Yeah, there. I think I think there are there are some businesses who, who, who are declining in the Spanish, but because of we are freight forwarding, like uh, we can focus on any of the sectors. I actually, actually, uh, that being said, freight forwarding and the supply chain is the backbone of the all of the global business. So uh, one of the business is slowing down, but we can have the other for 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 make make more margin from that one. So that being said, not really that pandemic. Uh, bring uh, some advantages to us, but frankly speaking, we are uh, improving and we are getting more in this pandemic because so many urgent shipments and so many um, ships that ha has to be shipped by air. As you know, in our pitch deck before, uh, air shipment is more profitable than the ocean one. Yeah, that's the point. No, thank you. Sorry, I got a feedback from the uh from the team, I think it's 
until 1.29, so we have three more minutes. So if you have uh, more questions, feel free to, to ask. Hi, this is uh, William from Calibra Capital. Maybe if you wanna tell us a bit about your background and why you decided to do this, that would be great, thank you. Okay, actually, uh, in Kirtin, there are three founding partners, uh, me, uh, Calvin, and one more is uh, Felix, but Felix cannot do it in this meeting. So, uh, Felix and Calvin uh, are from uh, Convention and Fred Coding uh, company before, and I was uh, in, uh, in the, I was uh, their clients, I was in the customer side. So, before I need, uh, I, was, uh, I was their customer, and I need some, uh, shipments that I asked and I got some problematic uh, uh, because of the price and then uh, booking so complicated before. So I, I, we see there is a, a, a blockchain in this uh, industry. So we meet up and we partner up and we make up this business. I was uh, uh, trading uh, machineries before. Yeah, I think I, I think uh, I mean, uh, if you are freight forwarding nowadays, uh, that, what, what I was saying before in the first period, uh, this is one of the oldest business, but it's lack of the digital transformation in this business. So can you imagine if you are asking for some rates, it should be like manual quotations and all. But yeah, uh, because of that experience before, because of the how, how slow are the place for freight forwarding, how the system slow, how asking prices kind of slow, we are we are dreaming of, of of this company. We are dreaming of making this all online and online coding and every, everything. So from the customer side, uh, I think yeah, I'm from the provider side and Andrew is from the customer side. So we 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 know this 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 one is becoming a problem nowadays. Thank you, uh, judges and. Kirim Kirim team for the presentation. I think, uh, shall we move to the next pitch from Czech Lab? Dr. Uh, Caesar. Okay. Yes, thank you, yeah. uh, Richard. Let me share a screen. Okay, uh, can you see it, Richard? Okay. Yes. Okay. You thank you. Start at the screen sharing. I'll, I'll start it. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Caesar. I'm the founder and CEO of Check Lab, health check at home platform. So our vision is to bring an accurate and rapid diagnostic at your home. So there are problems that make at home health check demand is rising. Number one is that. This COVID-19 pandemic fears are making people avoid the healthcare facilities. Um, they are afraid and everyone, I think, afraid to get infected uh, inside the healthcare facilities. And the second thing is people have become more health conscious. We see everyone now wearing masks, uh, uh, treat their health better than before. And now every country is also experiencing growth in the number of older people. So these things, we know that older people cannot mobile uh, really easily, so we have to better go to their place to uh, make a healthcare service to them. So we give them solutions. So they just need to stay at home and order the lab test through check lab platform. Then our certified sample collector will come, usually nurse or phlebotomist or analyst, to collect the sample, whether it is swab or uh, a blood or urine test, and bring it safely through our protocol to our qualified hospital and lab partners. While the patients can monitor the test progress uh, real time and also download it through the digital report bank so they can get the result faster than at the, uh, at the conventional uh, hospital or lab. Then uh, patients will get the free lab test result consultations with our doctors so they can really uh, fastly know what to do next. So why actually having an accurate and rapid diagnostic at your home is very important. It is because if you already know your diagnosis at your home, you already know whether you should go to the hospital right away or you can just isolate yourself, uh, at, take care of yourself uh, at your home. Uh, if you have to go to the hospital, you can also know where 
uh, which specialist you should meet, whether it's internist, neurologist, surgery, or emergency department. So it actually saves a lot of, of your, uh, very much of your time and money. And the market is very interesting that the uh, clinical laboratory market, the total market size is around 3.2 billion US dollars. It's like 10% of the whole healthcare uh, market size in Indonesia. So how about our business models? So our hospital and lab partners give us around 30 until 50% discount or commission on every sales. For example, there's uh, one test that uh, costs like uh, $250. Uh, we get it with the price of $125. Uh, so it's been two years since uh, Ivan and I built this company. Me, myself, uh, is a medical doctor specializing in internal medicine. And uh, I have around 10 years of experience in healthcare. And Ivan is a very great uh, CDO and also a very great salesman. And I think uh, all of our team is, uh, is a salesman. <laughs> so, uh, and I'm really proud of my team. And uh, these are attractions. Uh, we started at the end of 2018. And from that until the end of December uh, 2019, we have uh, already served more than 20,000 lab tests in multiple cities in Indonesia. And the interesting fact is that since this uh, pandemic starts from like May till August, uh, we already serve even more and uh, we get around $150,000 sales in just four months. It's interesting because it's a uh, the number that we, before we get it in our whole first year, and now we get it in four months, uh, and we get more clients also. So uh, there's several awards that we get before, such as the top, uh, we incubated by Indonesian Stock Exchange Incubator, and uh, we also get uh, some achievements, and also by the Next Dev Evangelist, uh, we selected to represent uh, Telkomsel Next Dev to China in Shenzhen. So uh, how about our clients? Actually, our clients are individuals, families, corporations, celebrities. Uh, so actually, uh, people want to know exactly uh, their health conditions accurately uh, as fast as possible. And for the corporations, they need to monitor the uh, condition of their uh, workers, whether they order a swap, uh, PCR swab test for COVID-19, rapid test, uh, and routine medical checkup. Well, uh, I hope together we can, uh, with technology, we can make better healthcare in Indonesia. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Caesar from the Czech Lab. Yes, and now we have 10 minutes for the Q&A session. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, hello. We'll go first. Um, thank you for your presentation. Uh, actually, I want to know um, how many customer can you handle uh, in one service? Uh, I mean, like in one in one time, uh, how many customer can you handle uh, with the uh, home service system? Uh, actually, like uh, we have uh, several uh, in-house uh, nurse and also freelance nurse. So if you want to increase more capacity, we can just hire more. Uh, so for now, we can handle uh, such as like in in a day, it's like in Surabaya, we can handle like up to uh, 30, 30 uh, sampling. Okay, thank you. Thank you. If I can ask um, Caesar, hey. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Um, so I think it, it has been a good momentum for you guys because there's a lot of, uh, I guess, demand uh, due to, I guess, rapid tests or swab tests at home uh, for COVID. How do you foresee uh, your business evolving post-COVID? Uh, because I believe, um, well, you know, blood checks or, well, uh, lab tests are, um, well, are naturally a lower purchase rate business, right? Uh, so how do you see the business model evolving? Okay. Uh, actually, we can see it, uh, we can uh, separate it into uh, some, some sectors. First, for, the, for this COVID-19 sectors. This thing, uh, I really hope that COVID-19 will go away soon, but uh, the fact is that it's a really tough one. 
so it will uh, stay long. I mean, the rules in the hospital that uh, before procedures or, or, or before coming to hospital, people have to get checked for COVID and uh, workers in the company have to check for COVID. I think it will last pretty long. So there's another uh, uh, big opportunity is also there. But the other thing, even before COVID, we already already do a routine medical checkup and other uh, it's, it's now the, the, diagnos the more accurate and advanced diagnostic, it keeps increasing every time. There's uh, like for example, uh, allergic test. Before like uh, the, the old times, people use a skin prick test to know the allergic. But now you just need to, uh, need to take your blood test and you will know 50 types of allergic in your body. It's uh, increasing every time. So, um, and uh, beside that, uh, with this uh, approach, uh, diagnostic is like the main gate like the first contact uh, of treatment. So uh, we know the conditions of each patient, whether they have uh, infections, diabetes, or other histories, we know what to do next. And that's also the big thing if we want to add new services such as immunizations, such as other treatments at home, like that. I think it's a very a big and consistent and growing over this year. Actually, Thanks, Dr. Cesar. I would like to add to Raditya's uh, point. Um, you mentioned home services. You know, how do you switch from such an ad hoc service, which is you know, uh, vaccinations to blood check, which is maybe once a year, twice a year, to something that you, it's a more repeatable business for your users? Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, we can make an uh, ad, uh, like uh, upselling service. So uh, what happened actually now after people are uh, Check, uh, checking their conditions for uh, COVID. Now, uh, then they ask for another uh, supplements and uh, medications for COVID. That's, uh, well, another, another like uh, cross-selling things. And uh, for, uh, besides that, uh, uh, home service vaccination is what we are already uh, waiting to do, that uh, when the, this, this vaccinations program is, or research is already established. I think I just uh, just want to make another input here. Um, this is not particularly a question because uh, we've looked at the model uh, several times before, and uh, I guess some of our portfolio companies have uh, have tried this out before as well. Uh, so I think you need to find another business line that kind of works as a foundation um, because well, uh, lab tests are a great um, I guess upselling product, right? Uh, so you should I guess take a closer look into like home care. Uh, not necessarily for the elderly, right? Uh, but uh, for for patients who require, uh, I guess, uh, constant monitoring. And you know, you because yes, uh, I believe the demand will always, uh, I, I guess, will stay for a while now uh, for for preventive measures. But uh, usually, it is bundled up into uh, into the doctor consultation uh, or uh, by the institution itself, home care, not necessarily. So, thank you. Uh, hi, uh, Michelle here from Skystar. Just wondering on the data privacy, you mentioned that you kept uh, all the patient data and all the lab test data online, right? Um, uh, how, how are you managing that against the regulation? Okay, so uh, actually we, uh, from from the hospital or the lab providers, so they, they send the data uh, strictly uh, through us with uh, certain codes via uh, emails for the soft copy. And, um, we actually also only allowed uh, our patients to open it uh, with that code also. And uh, for the hard copy, so for the printout, uh, it will be sent directly to the patient's house. Will you be able to kind of like uh, monetize through, like I guess, or, or probably you know sell the, or do some kind of analytics for insurance uh, on the patient data? Yes, actually, uh, First of all, the data is very uh, private that uh, we cannot give the raw data to anyone, but uh, we can make an, uh, data analysis, like uh, which, which place is the hotspot for uh, diabetes patients, which, which one is the hotspot for COVID and things like that. And we already also like have a, a small discussion with uh, NutriFood uh, and, and other uh, uh, health, health products companies. And uh, they are interesting to know further about uh, our data analysis, but for now, uh, with our uh, with our like team of 10, 10 people, we are still focusing to be the uh, number one uh, health check at home. So uh, sales, sales, and sales is 
our most priority right now. Noted, thanks. Thank you. Any more questions from the judges? Uh, if not, we have a question from the audience. Okay, sure. So this is a question from uh, Magdalena Adina. The question is, how do you handle the issue about the result of rapid test or swap test that can be changed from negative to positive? Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, so, uh, to be honest, uh, some people really ask that question and uh, to ask that want that that uh, result to be changed. But I think it's really we have a really strict ethics here, and uh, we really cannot accept that kind of uh, uh, demand. So uh, we directly will say no, like uh, even how much money you pay, uh, because it's integrity, it's it's, it's ethics. So no, we will not uh, do that at all. I think it's more like a business ethics. Thank you, uh, Cesar from Czech Lab. Uh, we have two more minutes. So if uh, you have one one more questions, you can. Uh... It seems that uh, there are no more questions. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Cesar from Chalk Lab and thank the you. judges. On to the next uh, pitch, pitch number three uh, from, wait a minute, from Pocket Pet, uh, Diana. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. So, um, I think Jessica, do you want to share the deck that I shared with you earlier? Oh, you, uh, you don't want to share it yourself, then? Uh, yes, I can do that. Yeah, you can do that. I I already permitted the sharing screen. Oh, okay. Because it seems like uh I'm still unable to uh do it. Can you try again? Okay, sure. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, good afternoon. My name is Diana. I'm from Pocket Path. No more cues, no more paper, no more hassle. Connect to your vet today. So basically, um, we are solving a big problem in Indonesia right now where there is a high waiting time whenever we want to visit any type of veterinarian clinics. On average, more than an hour waiting time for a really um, good uh, veterinarian clinics. Also, all of the records and documentations in each of these clinics are paper-based. 80% of all of the clinics are using a pen and paper and, uh, and a manual methods to do uh, uh, documentations. And also there's not a lot of um, opportunities or um, a medium in order for you to find the right vets based on specialties and locations and everything is mostly word of mouth. So that's why we created a solution where we as a pet owners can connect directly to our vets where we can get better and faster documentations, easier interaction, and get that analytics. We are basically connecting our uh, pocket pet brand, which is geared towards pet owner, to our veterinarian brand, which is Avid Data. For Avid Data, we provided and equip every single veterinarian clinics and vets a, a SaaS model where they can do uh, digital uh, documentations, analytics, even making payments, even interacting with your uh, with their pet uh, owners, and we also equip 
ourselves as pet owners a mobile app where we can do booking, make online consultation and get reminders um, and also make purchases to our favorite uh, clinics. Um, we also created the product based on vet specialties, location, and we also create uh, various different um, tools where the vets can also upload several different articles and also make that reminders and bookings um, to the pet owners. All the records also being stored digitally, where we call it a uh, pet passport, where if you want to travel uh, locally or internationally, you can just as easy as opening uh, your records and you can get all of the historical medical uh, uh, records and invoices and purchases as well. We also created a teleconsultation, uh, similar to other teleconsultation for humans, but this is for vets. Especially for COVID, this is becoming very, very popular, where you can automatically connect to your vets in the comfort of your home. Why pet industry? Well, as you can see, 7.7 .7 billion world population, 33% are pet owners. And the market size for this is 200 US dollar, 200 billion dollar US dollar market, growing close to 5% annually. And in Indonesia alone, we have 20,000 vets that really need this uh, support. And as you can see in Asia alone, uh, we are growing in terms of market size, second uh, growth uh, in comparison to Middle East and Africa. We don't really have a lot of competition in the industry where a lot of the um, solutions right now geared towards independent um, focus Pet registration will focus on pet registration. Pet app will focus only for pet app and veterinarian solutions will only cater to just veterinarians. Whereas we provide three-way integrations that can uh, have um, all this uh, industry connected. We have 7.3 billion dollar target available market globally. We have presence in Indonesia, Singapore, and we do have legal entity in Europe and the US right now, where it's uh, waiting for operations. Uh, currently for Indonesia region, our serviceable optimal market is about 370 million, uh, million US dollars. Our business model, um, we have three different uh, revenue models, subscription, sales margin, and advertisement. For subscription is basically only for the veterinarian uh, CRM, whereas for the other ones are for the pet owners. We have close partnerships with uh, the Veterinary Association of Indonesia, where we have an exclusive contract with them, where they supporting us for the 20,000 veterinarians all around Indonesia. We collaborated with other international um, uh, corporates as partners for co-marketing, co-branding, and uh, co-selling purposes. We currently have 268 clinics, a total of 314 vets and staff with 11, more than 11,000 customers and 17,000 pets. Uh, sorry, I was muted before. Um, and we are, uh, we are actually helping the government to evaluate on the diseases, on pet reports, uh, for example, in Indonesia alone, we have um, uh, cats as the number one. Oh, cats in Diana, hospital. sorry, time's up. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, okay, thank you, Pocket Pet and Diana, for the presentation. Now uh, we have ten minutes for Q and A from judges and the audience. Uh, hi, Diana. This is Junior from Indogen. Thank you for your hi. presentation. Uh, actually, Thanks. I was wondering, how do you ensure the quality of your fat and uh, how many registered like now in your app? app? Thank you. Yes, because we collaborate with the Veterinarian Association of Indonesia, we make sure that any vets that are in our system have what is called the membership license from the Veterinarian Association, what we mm -hmm. call it KTA. If they do not have this number, they will not be able to have um, access to this dashboard. Currently, we have 314 vets uh, within 268 clinics in our system.
yeah, I hope that answers your questions or. Yeah, I have a question regarding the region of operations. Uh, you've mentioned that you're also operating in US and Europe. Yes. Why is that? Um, we receive I think, yeah, she dropped off. Let's, let's take a pause and uh, wait for a couple of minutes. Okay. Hello, sorry about that. Uh, I did not know yeah. what was going on. So I just uh, turned off my video so that there's no connectivity issues. So basically, we received a pre-seed funding um, early this year from uh, Ampler Sweden, Ampler Singapore, and PECO Japan, where we believe that because of our nature of digitalization, we can bring this uh, in, the, in the global platform where Indonesia is our first market and the rest of the developed countries will follow. Uh, we do have collaboration uh, not only with our investors, but also to the re receptive um, European and American Veterinarian Association for this product. But it's TBA because of Corona, <laughs> so. Understood. And um, how do you acquire the vets as well? What's your uh, go-to market strategy on this? Basically, um, our target is to really build the trust through partnership with the veterinarian medical associations. And second, we do have in-house veterinarians who approach uh, individual clinics and give trainings and educations on the importance of going digital and introducing them to the new technologies that can change uh, the industry for the better. Uh, not only that, we also involve in a lot of different veterinarian events and pet uh, events and, uh, uh, through our collaboration with our partners. Got it. Understood. Thank you. Yes, we have six more minutes until 2 p.m. So, yeah, oh, hey, Diana. we can afford to go. Sorry, Richard, uh, cut you off over there. Um, hi, Diana, thanks again for the presentation. Um, just wondering, what is the, the, the composition of the team so far? Uh, do you have any co-founders with you? Yes, I do have two other co-founders. Uh, currently, um, I'm the majority shareholder where I own 86%. Uh, the rest, 11% uh, uh, are owned by the pre-seed investors and the rest are my co-founders. Cool. And how did you meet these co-founders? Are they also from a vet, vet, yeah, sorry, vet background or pet background? Yes, um, they have worked in uh, pet industry, Royal Canin to be exact, which is the largest pet food uh, company in Indonesia and around the world. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. Sorry, another question that I wanted to ask was, um, what's your plan for the next 18 months for um, Pocket Pet? Uh, basically to prepare to bring this platform, um, you know, uh, focusing on marketing, focusing on um, improving the IT that we already currently have uh, with the telemed and the um, uh, pet passport and documentation and really grow uh, further all around Indonesia, not only uh, we currently have vets all over Indonesia, but we want to continue doing uh, education and training for them and also preparing ourselves to go global uh, to bring this uh, platform uh, into the developed countries um, because uh, we already have uh, investors there and legal entity there. Got it, thank you. Thank you.
Yeah, so we have more audience joining as well. So uh, audience who just joined, feel free to ask your questions if you have any. And we have four more minutes until 2 p.m. for the Q&A. Hi, um, this is William from Calibra. Maybe if I could ask a bit about your marketing strategies and how you um, try to you know, market your product and your app to people, your channels and everything. If you could uh, speak a bit about that, that would be great, thanks. Thank you. Um, we actually have two different methods of marketing. One is online, one is offline. For online, of course, we are focusing on all the social media platform and forums and community-based um, um, sites. Uh, we actually um, have our own uh, division to handle uh, all of the advertisements online. Um, second, we uh, geared also on offline marketing where we leverage on our um, relationship with our vets, them as our agents, them promoting our business. It builds trust, it builds um, uh, traction as well for both parties because both parties can uh, use the solution uh, together. Uh, we also uh, uh, involve in uh, co-marketing efforts with a lot of our partners, uh, Veterinary Medical Association, uh, Royal Canyon, Dara Mars, Vetscope, uh, uh, Mela. We also have collaborate with Salfus, which uh, provides uh, pet insurance companies where we do co-marketing and co-branding activities. Uh, we also very active in participating in a lot of different pet events. Uh, for example, the EPE uh, Pet uh, Industry uh, uh, Annual Expo in BSD. Uh, we also um, uh, very much uh, actively involved in uh, other events. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, maybe one more question. If not, uh, from the judges, we have a question from the audience. Okay, so the question is uh, for Pocket Pet, is there an assurance or insurance in case the pet's customer data uh, lose? Uh, for the pet uh, data, for example, there is no current law regarding um, the uh, data privacy of the pet. However, technically, we are using um, uh, all highest measure to make sure that we protect our data. First of all, we used uh, a, a cloud-based system that is Indonesia-based. Uh, second of all, we use encryption key to make sure that all of the data are encrypted. And third, we follow through the uh, policies from the Veterinary Medical Association, where they will also be the oversee of our all of our data uh, and our medical records. Thank you, Diana. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think we have one more question. Uh, how do you monetize your app from up from an attendee here? Um, we have three different business models. Um, one, we provide subscription-based um, uh, model for our vets to use our SaaS platform. Uh, second, we uh, have a what is called sales margin, where we help uh, create an invoicing system for the vets to have a marketplace to connect with pet owners directly where, where we charge a certain percentage of transaction fee for that particular purpose. And we currently have not charged anything, so it's currently free, but down the road, we will charge 0.5 to 1%. Currently, total invoices that are happening in our system is close to 1 billion IDR. And we, after we reach a certain point, we want to start charging transaction fee. Uh, third, uh, uh, we also um, have advertising, advertising as our revenue model, where a lot of our partners, for example, uh, Royal Canyon or Data Mars, they do have some marketing activities um, which they want to collaborate with us, which we assist them to promote and to educate um, our users about the new products that they have. 
Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Diana from Pocket Pet and the judges for the questions. Uh, it's right on time and we're moving uh, Thank you. to pitch number four from Pick Up or Pick App. All right. <clears throat> um, let me share the screen. Everybody can see, right? Um, the screen, right? Can I start now? Yeah, yes, please. All right. So, uh, good, morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Mark. I'm the CEO of PCAP. Um, basically, we, are, uh, we have a mission or we have a dreams to uh, become, uh, to build ecosystem of new retail um, online, to online to offline commerce in Indonesia. So, uh, this, this startup actually starts uh, with me and my friends, Andrew. Um, uh, my, I myself I have experience in uh, f &B industries, hospitality for seven years. And I've, uh, I own my uh, small, small shops of retail. Um, and also I am a digital content advertiser. My co-founders is a senior uh, engineer in uh, and financial Alibaba. So we see the problem of uh, retail stores uh, nowadays. We see that um, they are really suffering. Uh, and then we, we decided to form this company, suffering in this pandemic, basically. So. We see the SME stores are really struggling to survive um, uh, at this pandemic um, and then PSBV 2.0 also make them uh, worse uh, because uh, the source itself doesn't have, a, uh, doesn't have a way to, to increase customer confidence to, to make them pay, book, and also um, purchase through the, through the stores, right? And then they don't have the tools as well to uh, reach directly the customer and also retain their customers. So uh, we see this as a broken bridge in the middle uh, where the two parties cannot meet. So we see that um, there's a shift, big shift in offline to online, but I think uh, we think as a team, uh, online is a short-term solution. We need a long-term solution for this um, because we don't know wh when it ends. And because 97% of B2C retail spend in Indonesia still happen in offline. So these are our uh, insight from McKinsey. Um, several months ago. So these are uh, the recommendation that they, uh, they, they ask uh, every retail stores to do. So basically to keep food traffic high, build loyalty online, maintain robust sales and redesign stores for safety. So, but we think that how, how the SME stores can do all of this recommendation if they don't have the platform, right? So we, we basically built the platform. We built a touch-free purchasing experiences, uh, basically uh, we start from f and retails because uh, that's my forte and uh, some of my co-founder forte as well. So we, we built like virtual menu basically um, and also cashless uh, transfers, uh, cashless, cashless payments. So basically the customers doesn't have to go to the cashier to pay with cash. They can, they can pay directly uh, from the table. And also uh, the merchant can really engage the customers through uh, promotion and broadcasting. And also they have loyalty program inside the app. So basically to retain the, app, the, the, the loyal customers inside the platform. And we open uh, different booking, booking ways to, for, for customers to really engage with the brands. Uh, they have drive through takeaway, and also in the future delivery. So uh, we think uh, from the data, uh, offline retail span in Indonesia is, is big and ripe for disruption and they need uh, they need um, help to really um, boost their sales and also make the customer confidence to really purchase the, the goods in the stores. So uh, for now, uh, we are in contact with uh, 50 brands in Jakarta and also 30% of the merchants are in talk and agree to join. Uh, we have prospective customers as well um, that we done survey. 81.5% uh, 81, 81 of them say that they are happy to to, to to use our products and really help them to make, make them safer. Uh, and also 200 potential customers are gained organically from the founding of this company. Also validated by different company uh, like, like Line Business and Alibaba.com. Um, so these are the highlights of our company. Basically we are providing touch, touch free experiences for retail, uh, loyalty platform. And also we implement AI and machine learning for the customer behaviors and movements uh, 
for uh, for us to make a better experiences inside the app and also target up targeted better in the advertising um, later. And also, we want to be like a pioneer in new retail. Basically, we want to transform the traditional brick and mortar stores into more digitalized in the future. But we start from F and B first. So these are our commission for now. We take commission one one point five percent to five percent, uh, depending on the traffic's. Um, also, we are developing a monthly subscription as well for now, uh, but it's still uh, in the process of uh, testing. And uh, how we how we, how is our go to market strategy? Basically, we we go from retail store platform and also we go from social media uh, platform to really engage Time's this uh, directly. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mark from Pick Up. Thank you, Pick Up. All right. Yeah. Now we have ten minutes for a question and answers. Hey Mark, do you also uh, provide a POS system for uh, the FNB companies? And if yes, how are you gonna compete against the um, other players? There's already like you know established relationship like Mocha and the others. Oh, we we provide that, but a simple one basically, just to receive a payments inside our uh, applications. But our focus really about the experience inside the app. So maybe in the future we can collaborate further with um, existing player players. But for now, we we we, we try to uh, push the experience inside the stores to be safer and um, and more enjoyable first to increase the sales basically. But oh sorry, so just just wondering, but what's stopping? Uh, I guess the existing players to kind of like create something similar um, with. Um, you know, like in their already like existing PR systems um, and create the solution just as a product um, within that that um, platform? Uh, basically, um, we, we are very confident to do, um, to, to uh, release this because we see that there is, uh, we are quite a pioneer in the market basically to do this. Uh, not a lot of big, mar big uh, company do that, but, um, we see like um, the PO, uh, I think there has to be more players in this field to, to really um, uh, help the market right now because um, the, big, the big business can do this, but I think that we're focusing more on the small, um, medium size of uh, stores inside, the, inside Indonesia, basically, yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay. Hi, uh, William from Calibra. Um, I just have hey. a question. How do you like, um, you know, um, how do you do your BD? How do you approach offline stores during this pandemic and how do you um, go about it? Thanks. Yeah, our BD is, uh, before pandemic is we, we go to the store one by one actually, because we, we have, um, we have a uh, testing merchant. Basically, we have tested this, this product before with 30 merchants in BSD area, and they are agreed to use our app so we can track. Uh, that's why we improve our MVP right now. But um, in this pandemic, we, we just start from, I think the, the most effective um, uh, the most effective channel is really social media um, from what we test um, because the rate of response is uh, the is the highest there so basically that's the our main um, our main way to BD and I'm afraid my if I may add on to that question um, how's your traction you know how many stores do you currently have and what's your annual sort of revenue for this year or maybe forecast for next year thanks um, we currently doesn't uh, we currently doesn't have a, a lot of um, we we ne we haven't uh, start to charge actually we just start to um, uh, acquire the merchant first that's our focus basically now we are in talks in uh, fifty famous brands basically um, and um, thirty percent of them are already inside our platform so we are we are doing it every day uh, to increase our sale uh, so our our uh, size basically. Um, yeah, that's that's basically our attraction. But in this, but uh, we are testing the monthly subscription model for the bigger business, basically, uh, to 
to cater uh, their needs uh, because some of them they uh, they ask for more personalized uh, experience for their for their stores. So we we cater to them as well. Okay, thanks. Uh, hi, Mark. Uh, adding hi. to William's question, I was just wondering, like, what's your biggest challenge to make the merchant use your app? I think, uh, yeah, we 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 have. Uh, uh, I think that's we that's what we experienced at the at the beginning. Um, we we are now we are building on a website platform as well for for a customer to really transact and use our app, because um, from our experience, it's really um, we cannot we cannot um, uh, we have to open as, as as many door as possible for the customer to really transact and use the menu inside the stores, because uh, a lot of them uh, doesn't doesn't want to uh, download the app at the beginning. So we try to uh, develop the website version as well. So for them who want to uh, pay with cash for now, uh, they can they can still uh, do it. But uh, if they want to do it, uh, they want to pay with cashless options, they can do um, from our application basically and log into our system. Yeah. Okay. We have three minutes left for our questions and answers. If there are any questions uh, from judges and audience, please feel free. One or two more. Yeah, just one, one question. I wanted to get an understanding of what type of retail merchants are you guys targeting at the moment? Uh, F&B. Um, yeah, we are focusing on F&B uh, retail merchant at the moment because First, my experience is really in the F&B and hospitality business um, for seven years. And second, uh, we think that the most severe damage that is uh, done uh, now because of the pandemic is really in the F&B and hospitality business. So that's why that's why we we want to help with our technology. Then we have uh, that's why we see that there is a chance for us to really improve the experience to increase sales for the merchants. I think, uh, yeah, that's it. Got it. And who would you be competing with at the moment? Because I understand there is quite a lot of players within uh, within this sort of O two O F and B space. Um. Currently, we don't focus on deliveries. Uh, I think delivery is only for us is uh, like additional points to our platform to make a customer to have more ways to order. Um, I think, yeah, uh, like Michelle says before, the, the closest uh, competitors to our uh, products is really uh, the existing uh, POS system and also, um, and also uh, online shopping basically. Okay, uh, we have one minute left. Maybe one question from the audience. Uh, how many users do you have currently? And what is your specific strategy to gain more users in the next year? Oh, okay, um, our users has been growing uh, to 300, uh, 200 plus uh, organically. So because of our focus now is really on the merchant side. So we let our users growing organically. Uh, so. Um, we, we believe if we have more merchants inside the platform, uh, we can give uh, more uh, options for the users later. And our focus is really uh, for the next um, next year, one year, is really to market through social media platform and stuff. And also we want to market them uh, through the merchant itself. So merchants gonna be promoting our product as well. So that's I think that's the most effective way to gain customer these days. Okay, thank you so much, Mark, from Pick right. App Indonesia and the judges and the audience. For the all questions. right, thank you very much, all the judges. Thank you. Now, uh, our last uh, startup, last but not least, uh, pitch number five, uh, Hala in uh, Activewear, uh, Sah Sahil. Yes. Time is yours. <laughs> We're still in the mute. 
Is it is it start? Okay. Yes. Uh, let me share my screen. Yes. Hello, everybody, respected judges. Uh, thank you for your time and thank you for Startup Grin and Aparico Working Space for organizing all these events. So it's time to break the ice here. Uh, our brand is Hala Activewear. Uh, we produce premium, high quality activewear using organic materials. And uh, for every product we sell, we plant a tree. That's uh, our main uh, main objective, which puts us, uh, which makes us work every day. So there are certain things in activewear industry which we are, which we have uh, pinpointed uh, is like first there is no activewear provider in Indonesia which provides uh, organic sustainable activewear. There are some who provides uh, nylon based uh, in Bali, but nobody provides organic. Uh, the second is uh, there is no activewear which is catering to both physical and mental fitness of the audience. And the third is like uh, there is no clear top of the mind Indonesian activewear brand in this big $946 million industry. Uh, uh, our solution is very simple. Uh, first of all, we make sure that our product is premium grade and it's really made up of high quality materials, high quality stitching, and we believe in slow fashion. That means once you buy the clothes, you don't have to really uh, uh, take care of them uh, so so as to like it, uh, there is no wear and tear. We make high quality goods, so it's gonna last, for, last with you longer. So if you're on a journey to lose 20 kilos, it's gonna be with you for the whole time and maybe beyond. Uh, next is to make a community of like-minded people who have positive attitude and always have interaction with the ideals or like uh, the people who can inspire this tribe uh, so that the tribe is always hyped and always ready to uh, take some transformation or interact with other community members. Mm. Uh, that's that's the plan which we want to go forward with Hala as our hashtag says doing right. We believe in doing right. Uh, and uh, that's that's uh, what is Hala. Hala is actually hello, uh, and we want this to be the new hello for all the community members which we are going to have. So maybe if in certain time, if some you see somebody else wearing Hala activewear, you can just go and wave and like yeah, we know we we click because we are from the same community. Uh, there are certain things asking like why is this right time to start an activewear brand in Indonesia? For me, it's not why right now it should have been started like way before because uh, let's say let's talk about the environmental effects okay even in uh, let's say as latest as 2019 uh, when there was fire indonesian uh, forest fires we lost 857000 hectares of uh, of forest land to put it in perspective more than 1.6 million of football fields okay if the there is a proverb saying the right time to plant the tree was 20 years before the second best time is now so we have to start planting trees now and um uh, this is the time one out of four indonesians had a suicidal thought so there is a big possibility amongst 40 45 participants now many of them had suicidal thought so this is the right time to address the uh, mental aspect which nobody addresses we need to uh, we need to build um, a platform where the relationship is not only transactional, but as a brand we really care about our tribe. So who is our tribe? Uh, as you can see, it's 20 to 35 year old, educated, professional, mindful, traveling, spirited women and men, uh, which is very easy to see uh, on Instagram. Uh, the people who do gardening, who do yoga, who is into mindful practices, and there are some advantages which we have. As I already say, we are the only one who provide the active wear in the fabric which we provide, which is blend of bamboo, organic cotton, and uh, elastane. And we are not a transactional brand, so we go beyond just like buying and selling of product, but we uh, try to create a community which is going to be helpful in the long run and have a better experience for our customers. Uh, the future roadmap, it uh, looks great. Uh, putting in perspective the industry, uh, if we talk about certain other players, let's say uh, how fast we can grow, I'll, I, I would like to say the journey of 
one of the new brands called Gymshark. I'm sure uh, if uh, you would have heard of it. So it started in 2012. In a small span of eight years, uh, it has grown from zero to $1.45 billion industry. And I think so in Indonesia, uh, we can replicate the success. Yeah, that's it Time's from us. Up. Sorry, Sahil. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Allah team. Now we have 10 minutes for our questions and answers. Yes. Hi, Sahil. I um, wanted to ask real quick on how you distribute your products to, to the market. Ah, thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, we have our own website. We uh, do it using uh, 3PL options, whichever is chosen by our users. We also sell on Tokopedia. Uh, not because uh, uh, I, we think like uh, when we start our website, there are some customers who prefer going to conventional marketplaces, but most of the sales until now has come from our website. And we also give a nice note in that with a poem. <laughs> Got it. And what's your main strategy for acquiring the market or acquiring uh, uh, customers? Yes, uh, we have been very lucky. We have tried to reach out various KOLs in industry. Uh, we pride ourselves because we never pay a dollar for promotion because we want to be uh, partners in, uh, we want to be partners in purpose. So we reach out to many KOL and KOLs like Freely, Miller, uh, Jessica Mila, and all of them have been really accepting and they've posted uh, wearing our clothes on their platform. and. I think so. I think so. That has been, that has really helped. And also we have a lot of engagement activities on our social media. We have like things like peas in the pod where we share healthy recipes. We have inspiration of the week where we talk about inspirational people and how do they uh, manage to uh, be what they are. So we have a lot of activities to engage our customers and potential customers. Hey Sahil, uh, thanks again for the presentation. Um, Hala really resembles the likeness of Patagonia and how successful they are uh, in the world. Just wondering what kind of you know, uh, lessons can you learn from, from all their success? Sure, sure. Patagonia is one of our role model and also uh, uh, Pangaea. There are so many, active, uh, so many brands which are coming up with uh, uh, aligned with nature products. Uh, for us, uh, we can learn from them is how they conduct the business and how the marketing is more towards how we stand uh, to true to our motives rather than true to market. Because uh, there was one ad from Pangaea is like the don't buy from us. And actually the sales went up uh, around 40 to 50% the next day after they had that ad, you know. Uh, that's that's one of the role model but without uh, with due respect to what they do we don't we don't want to copy them or something we want to have our own uh, market communication which is like uh, we we address all of our tribe members as eco warriors so it's like we getting together to help ourselves our body and our planet because this is the only two places where we live you know and I, we always get inspired by new and new brands which are coming and also the old brands which are getting more eco-friendly day by day. It just shows like the industry is moving in direction which we are already in. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you judges. Uh, yeah, I'd like to also offer the space to the audience if you wanna ask questions. We have until 2.31 for the question and answers. Hey guys, if there is any question, feel free to ask. Hi, Gani again. Wanted to ask about your attractions at the moment. Like how many units have you sold in the past, um, in the past 12 months? Uh, I, uh, thank you for the question again. We just launched on 21st March of this year, uh, which is also International Day of Forest. So we uh, launched very near to uh, Pairs Bebe, but until now we have managed to sold uh, 252 active wear, 
and uh, yeah, and things things looks positive because every uh, month we are selling more and more, and uh, we have also planted until now eight hundred and fifty. Uh, 802 trees. You, uh, we planted tree for every product we sell, but we have planted more trees than uh, we have sold because just because we love planting trees, you know. And we also plant trees for every product which we give to influencers, so that adds up to it. So yeah, until now we have sold 252, and hopefully, uh, with nine with good guidance, with uh, that's what we are here for, with good mentorship, with people to help us out. Maybe we can sell more, way more. Our, our goal is to plant 1 million uh, trees by the end of 2025. Got it. Thank you, Sahil. Thank you. Hi, uh, Will from Calibra. If I may add on to that, if I may ask, where are you, you know, planting these trees and how does, how does those costs get into, you know, in terms of uh, making the shirts? Are they like significant or not at all? If you could uh, talk a bit more about that, that'd be great. Thanks. Thanks a lot for the question. Uh, I almost skipped out on that part. So as you can see my background, this is where we plant the tree. This is Tanjung Puting. It's in Kalimantan. Apart from uh, being a, a place where we plant the trees, I've uh, personally been there and planted tree in Tanjung Puting. It's also a conservatory for uh, Orang Hutan in Indonesia and many other biodiversities protected under this uh, conservation. Uh, we have partnered up with One Tree Planted Organization, and it's an international organization with uh, really nice standings. I don't know if some of you follow football or not, but like recently Hector Bellerin planted trees for every match Arsenal would win. It was also with the partners which we have One Tree Planted. So they are like really uh, great partners um, to work with. And uh, uh, the cost of planting a tree is $1 for per... Um, one dollar, one tree. So yeah, we pay it from our uh, profits, and I think so. I think so. Uh, that's something which we love to do. So like, it's not a burden yet. <laughs> I, I okay, hope. Cool. Any questions? Okay, so we have three minutes left, and there's one question from the audience. Okay. So. One asks, uh, where where can I buy the wearable and how much is the price? Okay, thank you. <laughs> you can buy it on uh, hala.co.id. You can go right now and buy. We have really nice uh, partnership right now going on. Uh, not promoting, but like I want to bring light to the partnership which we go through. Right now, we are partnering with a local brand called Lore Curio. And you can buy a set of Hala Active Wear and uh, a diffuser pendant. Um, which uh, which is made out of crystal. So that's that's just one way of showing like how do we partner to create more awareness about issues faced by our customers uh, or our tribe, which is related to mental issues because of uh, lockdown. And uh, right now it's uh, again, there is Space Baby 2.0. So there's a lot of mental issues to deal with. So you can really work out or also meditate. And we also had this opportunity to partner with Hydroflask, uh, this one of the company which also really resonates with our uh, values of being eco-friendly and saying no to plastic. So yeah, um, you can buy the clothes on hala.co.id and uh, and Tokopedia and Blibli. Yeah. Thank you, Sahil. Answer your question. Yeah, we have two minutes left, so one more question. Hi, yeah. Sahil. I think I want to ask a question. Uh, okay. Thank you so much for that ice-breaking uh, parody. It was hilarious. <laughs> and thank you for bringing a very positive uh, attitude into this pitch battle. Uh, I have a question. You have a, a few values that are pretty strong, including um, promoting mental health and then also environment. How do you clearly define uh, these messages into your um, brand? Because it may be uh, uh, difficult to like get mixed up, you know. Thanks. True, true, true. Uh, that's what uh, it's very difficult. But I think so with uh, with constant and regular communication, we can always solidify our position and what we actually want to say. So the first thing which we do is like we use our social media and our uh, like Instagram. We never talk about our 
products uh, like like what are the qualities of our products we have our website for that we usually send out communication which is like how can we help how can how can we uh, help bring a little bit of solace or how can a workout or meditation bring uh, calmness to your mind and things like that we also have um, Mm, blogs which uh, cater to this on our website and uh, yeah c- actually communicating the mental aspect is very difficult when it comes to an activewear brand because not many of thing per, uh, not many people perceive mental uh, activity as men- mental health as mental fitness mental fitness has it it is as hard as growing in physical fitness and you have to put in uh, training sessions day by day every day and there are a lot of apps right now like calm also a lot of youtube and books uh, which help you uh, have this nice uh, mental fitness and a mindset of a winner and just using our platform we try to create more and more education every every week every day every month and hopefully uh, we can go forward with this we also like yeah partner with kol uh which are um, in this uh part of um community so we partnered with uh, nadia she's uh she works in rain um rainforest alliance rain. yeah rainforest alliance and like so every time a, a kol or a influencer uh is a, uh, is uh showcasing us we are getting more and more crowd of a same vibe in our audience yeah Okay, thank you, Sahil. Hopefully that. Thank you, Sahil from Hala. So that was the last question uh, for the pitch battle. So congratulations for all the startups that have pitch. So from Kirim Kirim, check lab pocket. and hala active wear so thank you so much and now uh we'll go on a chats and uh thank you also judges as we'll come back uh to announce the winners so yeah, short break please stay tuned uh because we're gonna announce the winners after our break thank you all oh um Okay, the winners. The third winner from uh, Startup Grand Jakarta Pitch Battle competition today is, drum roll please, make your own um, sound effects. <laughs> Congratulations to Check Lab. Yay. Congratulations, Check Lab team. Uh, you're entitled to three month Startup Grand membership. Three months of okay, that's the drum roll. <laughs> three months of Apiary community membership and golden ticket to plug and play Indonesia top 50 batch eight application. So congratulations, Dr. Cesar and team from Czech Lab. Okay, uh, on to the next one. Uh, second winner, drum roll, please. Okay, congratulations, so Kirim Kirim. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you. Oops. <laughs> okay. I just pretend you don't see that. But wait, can we move back, please? Okay. Sorry for the technical difficulties here. So correlations team kirim kirim. Uh you're entitled for six months of startup grant membership, six months of apiary community membership, mentorship session by several VCs. And golden ticket to plug and play, uh, top 50 batch eight application. Congratulations, Tim Kirim Kirim. And the first winner is just pretend you didn't see it. Um, is pocket pad. Okay, <laughs> that's really enough. <laughs> so, congratulations, Pocket Pet, uh, for winning this startup pitch battle. Uh, you got one year of uh, membership, uh, community membership, three months. 